everybody. What's happening? I gotta switch the camera. Here we go. What's going on, everybody? Good to see you out there. Everybody doing good today? We've got something good planned today, y'all. I think you're gonna thoroughly enjoy. I predict. Uh, first, today. Yeah, man. I got new toys. What'd you get? <laughs> I got this Elgato Stream Deck. It's got these buttons, and you can program the buttons to do pretty much whatever. That's awesome. So yeah, so when you say something really good today, there'll be a a, a, a rousing <laughs> a rous, rousing round of applause and, and awesome. cheers <laughs> and celebration. I love we it. Can, we can just get down with the music. Good to see you, Bob. How you doing, man? Dude, doing good, man. Doing good. Good, good. Good to see you, dude. Um, what's going on in the foreclosure world and the For short sure. sales? <clears throat> yeah, same, same as usual. I mean, you know, people should just be gearing up for what's going to happen six to 14 months from now. I know every time I come on, it gets like that, like window gets longer. First, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, six to eight months, six to 12 um it's going to be longer than i originally thought but yeah man investors your students people watching this um everybody in my opinion should be gearing up for six to 12 six to 14 months from now because that's when everything's going to drop value wise I see. a lot of distressed homeowners are going to need to sell their property for sure uh you were saying on the public facebook group mm -hmm for Real Estate Wholesalers Club, what is it? Some absurd number, like 4.7 million homeowners are in forbearance right now. What and does that just, mean, Bob? And that's just coming into this week. So like, it's gonna be higher week by week. It's starting to slow down a little bit, but I mean, the number is still gonna creep. What a mortgage forbearance is, um, people because of COVID-19, tons of people getting furloughed and laid off, they don't have the money to pay their mortgage every month. So the government is giving them forbearances. So that means usually from, from now until like 180 um, days, they don't have to pay their mortgage. And then whatever they don't pay just gets tacked on to their end balance. So I see. Oh, it's a short term solution. So um, they don't have to repay that immediately. Is that or? Or they, it gets tacked onto the end of the note? It gets tacked onto the end of the note, yeah. Yeah, it just gets ballooned onto the end of the note, correct. What, what do you think that's an indication of, Bob? Is that an indication of 4.7 million homeowners who are struggling to make the payment? Yeah. That's what that means. That's, 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 literally, that's literally why they created the forbearance program. It's exactly what it means. So People cannot pay. Yeah, so these folks have some kind of planning they need to do. Um, they either need to get new jobs, right? Maybe they've lost a job or they need to, you know, move, <laughs> uh, sell the house, um, do something with it. Um, but, but for now, it, it, it's, um, it's okay. They're, they're safe for now, but it's just, like you said, a short-term solution. And you know, if they don't correct what's going on, that's causing them to not be able to make the payment when the forbearance period ends, they're still going to be able to not make the payment. Right. I mean, they right. still will be struggling. Right. Yep. Um, so 4.7 million, I was telling everybody yesterday that 4.7 million people on forbearance should be an indicator to us that there's a lot of motivated sellers coming on to the market, right? Like <laughs> those, are all, those are all distressed homeowners. People that yeah. are, you know, wholesale investors, like a lot of your students are, should be licking their chops right now and 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 preparing strategy, using the stuff that you're teaching them to get these leads ready to um, plug it in six, eight months from now, man, because that's when it's coming. You know, if you're in the distressed real estate business, whether you're a short sailor like I am, whether you're a wholesaler, flipper, whatever the case is, there's going to be a lot of opportunity all across the country in every market. Yeah. Um, so what, what, what do we do when we run into someone 
who is in a forbearance situation, but they're already made up their minds or they're making up their minds. Hey, I want to bolt up out of here. I want to get gone. Um, lost my job. No reason to stick around town. Um, but this house is just really a burden to me. Even though I'm in a forbearance period, I, I need to dump it. Um, but I'm also like in trouble with the bank. I'm lucky this forbearance period came along, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, these people are, are a lot in underwater scenarios, you know, yeah. where they owe more to the bank already <laughs> uh, than what they're ever going to be able to pay back. Um, mm -hmm. So in that kind of situation, we call Bob, right? Yep. Yep. If you're a wholesaler and you're marketing to these sellers and they are underwater, just like Justin said, they can't, um, you, you know, there's not enough equity there. You know, they're underwater on their property and you can't assign that type of deal. Cause again, there's just not enough equity for you to wholesale it. Instead of throwing it out, you could refer it to my company, universal short sales. You could email me or you could log on to our website. We have a wholesaler lead form. You literally just fill it in. It comes right to me. And uh, you make $500 for every one of those leads you send instead of throwing them away. So you can yeah. create a system, you know, a secondary source of income for your business. It's, uh, it's really right. powerful stuff. Yeah, that's great. So when we run into these people who have financial problems and they're they're like they were going through <laughs> they or still i guess are going through foreclosure it's just been set off a bit yeah um that's th these are the great opportunities to uh to get on universal short sales.com is that right yep universal short sales.com and then there you know you just hover over the contact us and then you click on wholesalers submit leads here it's as easy as that okay or just Email me, Facebook me, whatever the hell you want to do. It doesn't matter. Okay, great, man. Um, we're looking forward to, to uh, doing some deals with you because we do run into people that are desperately lost in foreclosure, um, even though the forbearance period is going on. Yep. And a lot of these people are ready to do something, anything, and they don't want to, they don't want their financial lives ruined any more than it already has been, right? That that's it. You guys are on the front line, so you see it better than anybody. Yeah. One thing too, if I could give like a little piece of advice dealing with the people yeah. in forbearance, Justin, is like be patient with them. I think I posted this on your um, Facebook group a couple weeks back. But like it's something I'm seeing in my business. Just because you talk to a motivated seller <laughs> and the bank let them delay their mortgage parent payments on a forbearance, a lot of these people, it's just going to be short term. So put them on a follow up. Don't just throw those yeah. leads out. Yeah, you know, they're going to be really good wholesale deals when they have to sell at the end of those forbearances. So a Absolutely. lot of the competition, I would imagine, is just going to say, OK, and just write them off. But, um, yeah, you know, yeah. stay with them, I would say, definitely. Yeah, this is an emotional thing for these people. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if anybody's ever experienced a foreclosure before. I unfortunately yeah. have. Okay, I shared my story uh, a couple months ago. Um, this was over a decade ago when this happened, but I went through some, I've lost a lot. And the foreclosure process is a humiliating and scary thing. And when you call someone that's in the middle of all that emotional upheaval, they're not always ready to do the dance with you in the first five seconds. I mean, they're already untrusting of a lot of what's going on in their lives. So, the follow-up is huge, man. That's a great golden tip. Write their write their name down and their their phone number so you don't forget, right? That's so true. Yep, and just you know, don't 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 be too pushy because, like Justin said, that's going to be a turnoff for him. So, you know, just ask them, hey, do you mind if I keep in touch with you throughout the forbearance? You know, throughout the forbearance period, and you know, if you want to sell at the end of it, if that's what you need to do, we could help you. If not, that's fine. Yeah, so definitely. Um, you know, be compassionate for sure. Somebody here in the chat asked if uh, what percentage of short sales are, are being approved. Does that make sense? Uh, kind of. I mean, that's not so. So, I mean, you can't really answer that through like a general answer. It depends who's who's processing it and how well it's processed. For the ones that I do, you know, the um, vast majority of them get approved. As long as it's eligible for a short sale, we could get it done. <clears throat> so. Which means that they're underwater. Correct. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. The two factors you want to look for, guys, too. And again, like when you have good short uh, um, wholesale leads, forget about me. Do your thing. I'm just here for the dead leads, the stuff that you have to pass up on, the people that don't have enough equity for you to wholesale it like uh, Justin teaches you. So Yeah, it's awesome to have Bob in the club, guys. Yeah. Um, I love being here. It's fun, man. There's so much dialogue. <laughs> people are so into it. I told you before, I had to uh, – shut my um chat thing off and ding 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 i yeah. couldn't get any work done everyone's talking it's, it's awesome it, man. it is it's great man i love the atmosphere here and yeah. uh everybody seems to care and everybody seems to want to be supportive and helpful of one another and, and bob you fit right in man you fit right in it. yeah uh, people have been reaching out to me too so like you know you guys have been dming me pm me after this with like random questions keep it up i'm happy to help you know even if it's yeah. not like you know, even if I'm not monetizing it, I don't care. I'm happy to help you know anybody with anything. So yeah, so um, you've got a booklet that that you can uh, help us out with too, the us wholesalers. Uh, that will yeah. explain kind of the process, what it is, what it do, how it work, um, what yeah. we can, what some things we can say to homeowners that will, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. move us in that direction of helping them. This, yeah. yeah, yeah, super um, easy read. It's literally yeah. six pages. It's a real short ebook. Um, you could fill out a form on my site, just, uh, you know, there's a little box to who, who referred you or where'd you see me. You just put Justin's name in, um, it's a wholesaler contact form, or you could just, uh, DM me on Facebook, send me your email and I'll send it to you that way. Either, or it's all good. Okay. Great. Great advice guys. Um, universal short sales.com universal short sales.com Bob Vieira. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, man. Hey, you know what? Rah, rah for you, yeah, I love it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, dude. Thanks for being a part, man. And we'll, ch we'll check in with you next week, dude. Thanks. See you in a week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, everybody. Um, that was uh, Bob Vieira, Universal. Universal. Oh, why am I having a hard time talking? Universal. <laughs> Universal short sales. Silly Sally sold short sales by the seashore. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I hope everybody's doing okay out there. Um, I've got a little static in my mic. I don't know if anybody can hear that or if it's just me. I uh, hope it's just me. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the topic for today. If you're in the VIP club, I promise to talk about this today. And of course, we want to open up for any questions you guys may have too. So let's go ahead and uh, share the screen with you guys. Um, I see several people on here, Janet, myself, Oscar, Daniel, Maxwell. Hey, good to see you, man. I uh, miss talking to you this week, by the way. Uh, Victor, Edward, Timothy. Uh, yeah, welcome, guys. I want to jump into this virtual assistant pre-screening script. But I also want to be open for any questions you have. So feel free at any time to interrupt me and let's talk turkey, okay? <laughs> let's talk turkey. But but let's go ahead and jump in and unless you guys have something you want to interrupt me with. Uh, okay, so I'm going to share the screen here and show you the browser that I have pulled up. Actually, let's back up here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the Lease Options 2.0 course, which is kind of kind of our springboard course here. Uh, there, there is a free course over at realestatewholesalersclub.com if you're out there in the world um, and you want to try some free training and get some free agreements and poke around a little bit. Yeah, you can do that out at realestatewholesalersclub.com, but... But there is an upgraded course. This is the 2.0 stuff. This is where we include the outsourcing materials. So you can plug in your virtual assistants and your operations managers and so on and so forth. And better than that, we even have the VIP club, which is where we get together like this really on a daily basis and work through the details of the problems and help one another. And that's who is here in the Zoom room with me today. <clears throat> We've got the VIP club. So I appreciate you guys being a part. You guys recognize this course, the Outsource Lease Options 2.0. Um, if I slide down to this particular module where we're talking about building an acquisitions team, 
there is a, a module called how to have endless lease option leads. And then there's a module called how to call leads and get deals. Now that's really what we're talking about today when we're talking about pre-screening or pre-qualifying seller leads. So how to call these leads and get deals. So if you click this green button right here, it will open up for you a Google Drive folder. And you can see inside there is a couple different videos that are training and then there's a couple folders the one folder says agreements and propaganda okay so that's where your your contracts that you're going to need at this stage to get the deal with the homeowner that's where they are located and some propaganda for you to send them and edit it up make it yours put your name on it put your phone number on it take mine off and <laughs> wouldn't it be great if everybody just sent this to all all their homeowner leads with my information on it. I mean, wouldn't I just get richer? <laughs> uh, okay, take my name off though and put your name on it and your phone number. But uh, the second folder here is the VA pre-qualify and closer script, okay? And if you click that right there, that will take you into this folder, which is just two more folders. It's like a box inside of a box inside of a box. <laughs> I wish there was a better way to organize this, but I just can't figure out how. So, yes, in the pre-qualify and closing folder, there's two training. Um, really, you could almost call them courses, really, but but not not quite. Many courses. One is the deal closer training. This is also known as mastering the phone. So I give this away a lot as a gift to people who are kind of poking around here at the club and they want to find out what they, you know, what they want to know, but they don't want to, you know, they don't want to jump. You know what I mean? They just put their toe in the water. I get it. I do give this part away a lot, but I don't give away this part. And that's the pre-qualifier training. And if you click that file, it will open up um, right here. You'll see once you open it up, it'll say there's a training video and then it'll say new VA pre-qualify lead script. All right, then there's actually an old script. <laughs> All right, I wanna talk about these two things because um, a lot of people like this old script. This came from Ron Legrand. I've gotta give him credit for that. I didn't, I didn't create this, I used to use it a lot. Um, that's why I put it in the folder because it's so great. It's it's I'm, I don't have his permission to sell it or do anything with it. I'm just I, I just like it. And you know I'm sorry, Ron. I love you. You're the best in the world. You're granddaddy. And I I'm just looking up to you. Okay. All right, Big Cheese. Because that's <laughs> everybody knows. You're the man. Okay, Ron. <laughs> but this is the VA. Uh, call script and, and and I was watching some videos from Ronald Legrand the other day and he still uses this and his virtual assistants still use it so <clears throat> what I want to do is I just want to show you this in in brief because I really want to go over the new one this is the old one remember that that I used to recommend people using and you still could I guess you still could use this it's in the folder um, but the black stars, you see these black stars here? These are the important parts. The rest is important too, but these are the these are the metrics that you will need to analyze your deal, right? The asking price, estimated value, comparables, uh, any mortgage information, um, when do you want to move? Okay. And then there's kind of a little map here with some arrows that tell you where to go if they say this or if they say that. I like that. And that makes some people feel really comfortable. I get it. I really, really do. So, but that's the old one. I don't want to talk about the old one too much. I want to talk about this new one. <clears throat> this is the new one. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. This is a pre-qualifying customer service script okay for your virtual assistants and i think that this is important for us guys because let's be real the phone's hard work it's hard work right 
and some of us cannot even imagine a world in which we personally would run a scraper and do a text blast and get the leads and then sit down every day for a couple hours and call these leads. Right? I mean, <laughs> it's not uh, it's not something a lot of us look forward to. I'm good at it, though, but I've been practicing for a while, see? Um, you might not have been practicing as long as me. And not only that, I'm kind of a ham. I mean, you know, I like to, uh, you know, be silly and funny and goofy and outgoing and social and... I like to talk to people. Um, I like to, I'm like that bird. You ever have a bird in a cage and you put a little mirror in the bird cage and it'll sit there and look at itself in the mirror and kiss itself and sing to itself. And yeah, that's me. <laughs> uh, but that may not be you. So <clears throat> if that's not you, here's what I recommend. Do some lead gen. You can do lead gen yourself. You could hire a virtual assistant to do it. But guys, honestly, is it really that time consuming to run the, is it that time consuming to run the, the scraper on automated REI and do a text blast? It's not that time consuming. Not really. Um, when you first start doing it, it might take you 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, maybe tops. You know, it's it's not that complicated. You'll you'll get better. You'll get quicker. So you could technically do some lead gen on your own, but you could outsource it. It's up to you. I I like doing it myself a little bit too. Okay, and if I were you, I maybe would do it myself. But then I would hire a virtual assistant to help me pre-screen and pre-qualify some of these leads. That way, I'm talking to the ones that sound motivated in some way. And I'm not just going through the numbers. Even though you eliminate a lot of people with the automated REI by, by technology, they, they, text, they don't text you back or they text you a no or they text you something else negatory. Uh, even though they do that, you get, let's say you get 30 yeses and maybes to your message, if it's a good message, then you still will have no about like what, 29 times when you call them? Right. So just because they said yes on the text doesn't mean they're ready for your contract, right? So somebody has to call these people and start from the beginning and, and work through it a little bit with them. And, you know, that's, that's tough because you get told no. And right say what yes is mean that you can go and pre-screen them right yeah yeah that's what i'm talking about yeah the yeses mean you can go pre-screen these and you're you're going to find out that not all 30 of those yeses and maybes are a deal only maybe one is and that's just the nature of people it's the nature of leads it's the nature of this business that's the nature of any business where you're doing outbound marketing like this Okay. So, so Justin, if if I got a yes and I and and I pre-screen them, should I run the comp before I call them? Yeah, and that's easy to do, Edward. Because let, let's jump right back into the uh, into the actual script here, and this is what you'll want to train your virtual assistants on. You'll you'll definitely want to make sure that you've gone over this with them. Don't just hand them this script and stay, say, okay, off to the races you go. Uh, that's not going to do. You have to train well, these. I, I actually want to, I actually want to do this myself before I decide to auto. Uh, well, that's yeah. a heck of an idea too. Uh, thank, thank you for saying that, Ed. I mean, that's a really, really good idea. You can totally step up to the plate and do this yourself too. And, this is a great if you're if you feel weak on the phone and you feel like you don't like it's the phone is confrontational or something then this is a great way to ease into a relationship with some of these buyers I mean some of these homeowners and yeah 
great because this this right here this call right here is not a sales call this is not a closing call this is not a can I send you my agreement this is none of that this is just a relationship building and fact finding mission that's it right okay and a great way to slide into it man good idea good idea there so well you know what? I actually I actually wouldn't mind you going over how to um, uh, find the comps because I got like five calls I got to make today what I did was when I when I ran my ran my campaign I, the people that sent me yes, I text them back and ask them, would it be okay if I contacted them by phone and we could talk? And five, about five or six of them text me back, say, yeah, call me today. So I got to make some calls today with them, and uh, I don't want to go in there blinded. Do you have prop stream? Yes. Yeah, prop stream's how you find the comps, man. Real easy. Just throw it in the search bar, hit enter, the address, hit enter, and then slide over to the right and hit analysis. Or details and then you can it, you can click the button that says comps or comparables and it'll pull them up right there for you dude bada okay, bing bada I'm boom see what you got free and jump on it we'll talk about it then yeah we, we can talk about it man um i would show you here today but i don't have the login memorized and i'm not logged in on this particular computer device so i i'd have a hard time showing you but I'll be happy to if, once I sort that out. <clears throat> well, I can go on and play with it and find out. I mean, yeah, comparables is comparables is real easy to do on on PropStream. So um, I think you'll be amazed when somebody shows you. It's pretty pretty quick and easy. The uh, or or maybe somebody else in the group beat me to it and show you. Uh, Debbie's great about that kind of stuff. I love Debbie. Uh, this script, not a sales call real easy going you can see at the top it's just a pre-qualifying customer service type call so you want to get your virtual assistant out of the sales mode okay they don't need to be in sales mode they need to be a sweetie they need to be polite and nice and sweet and cute and happy and you know all the things that make you not want to hang up on a on a person <laughs> I almost said all, all those things that make you want to not hang up on a bia. Uh. <laughs> I called a guy yesterday, Justin, man, and he, man, he had me. I was like, oh boy, I was lost. <laughs> uh, what, what do you mean you was lost? Because he, you know, when we got to talking, he said, "Well, you you speaking on a uh, owner financing, and and and, and uh, I'm not looking to own a finances. That's what you're talking about, and I didn't know what to tell him." <laughs> Yeah, that's a. So I kind of went. I kind of went through what you told him. Told him I was, I'm an investor. You know, I, I mean, I can't afford to, to pay what you want for your property. And he came to the conclusion, but I don't want to own a finance. I didn't want. I don't want to do that. I want. I want cash. And he was saying he would. He would entertain taking uh, on a finance. To, it depends on how it's set up. And he went into a lot of spiel and stuff. And I didn't know what to tell yeah. him. So. Uh, okay. Well, but like you say, was... he wasn't a mo he wasn't motivated anyway because he was a broker. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kind of a more sophisticated, savvy real estate mind. You, right, um, but it, you know. it was a good call because it learned me. I learned something. Oh learned yeah, me. yeah, and you, and you, yeah, you do. You learn something from all of them. Um, okay, so the top of this is just basic property information. Owners on title. I I want to point this out right here. This owners on title. Do you see this right here in the middle? Owners on title. Um, yes. I want to point that out because. When you ask these people their name and if they're on the, the when the VA does ask them if they're on title, um, you will want to go to PropStream and verify this or the county tax records. You could do that in most counties by going to the that county's website for their property tax assessor, and and you'll find out who the owner is. Because trust me, the county knows because they want to send that, that bill every year. <laughs> um, you will find in some cases <clears throat> the names don't match up and you need to find out why okay <laughs> either it's a scam or it's somebody selling their mama's house for them or or something else but you know this it's important that you know who you're dealing with so I, I, just a, just a public service announcement make sure you're, you're dealing with the actual owner here double check that 
And um, all right, so here here's where the conversation begins. And you, I'm just kind of going to read this here. But I want you to think about things in terms of your virtual assistant being able to say this in a very sweet, very polite, very non-confrontational, very friendly manner. Okay. And in their own words, mostly what is written here, but loose, loosey-goosey a little. So it's not like I'm reading a script. Practice with your virtual assistant a few times before you cut them loose, please. Okay. If you haven't personally made a video like the one I'm making right now with you guys for your virtual assistant, or you haven't personally been on the phone or Skype with them for like a half hour, hour, and role played this particular conversation with them, you are actually setting yourself up for failure, guys. So, and them too. Just because it's written down doesn't mean they understand how to go through this form and fill it out. So, practice with them a little bit. That's my advice. Now, it doesn't matter if you called them, you texted them, they called you, whatever. See, you're going to have to customize this right away because the lead might be an inbound lead. It might be a lead that you text blasted them and then they texted back and you set up an appointment or your virtual assistant set up an appointment to, to call them this afternoon and talk to them. However, you might not say, hi, thanks for calling back. That doesn't make sense in some cases, right? So you might just leave that out. You might say, hi, we are, hi, my name, hi, my name, hi, my name is Joy. Me and my boss, we're real estate investors in the area and we're looking to buy a few more properties by the end of this month. Now, we sent out a few messages to some properties that fit our buying criteria, and we took a real interest in this one. Um, so we buy houses, and we think that we want to buy this one. Does that sound okay? Isn't that a great agenda? I mean, it's like, it's a great intro for a virtual assistant and a customer service call. Nothing there really sends off a red flag in my mind. Um, then they're going to say, all right, so... Mr. or Mrs. Homeowner, what's your situation and how could we help? If they say there is no situation, then they're either going to have to dig around a little bit and say, okay, you don't have any real situation. You might skip to the next call or the next line and say, okay, so what would you like to see happen by the end of this call? Um, it depends on how good your virtual assistant is. They may be able to turn the screw and dig a little bit here and find out what the situation is, or or they may not. And it, and it may be different for everyone that they, they call because every homeowner is different. Every homeowner is different on their level of openness, on their level of I'm willing to share. Okay, so this here is don't get caught up on it. This is not a big sales closing or anything. It's just a simple question, Mr. Homeowner, Ms. Homeowner, what's the situation that you're in and how could we help? And if there is no situation, this may not be a motivated homeowner, okay? But they're, they should at least ask the next question anyway and say, okay, so what would you like see, to see happen by the end of this call? I love that question, guys. Because if this is a non-confrontational phone call, this is not a sales call. They don't feel like they're being called by a salesperson. They don't feel like they're being called by a telemarketer or a scammer. Then this line right here will open the door very often to them just telling you straight up what's going on. You know, have you ever had a friend say, hey, man, how you doing? And you're like, oh, I'm doing OK, I'm doing good. And then he's like, OK, so. Are you really doing okay? And you're like, well, nah, I mean, you know, you know me. I mean, I can't believe that this has been happening. And here comes the flood, right? Sometimes we all just have that one lie in us. And that's what this is trying to flush out. What's your situation and how can we help? Well, I don't got no situation. Okay, well, what would you like to see happen by the end of the call here, sir? Well, you know, I need to get out of this house. You know, okay, <laughs> you're giving them a second opportunity to tell you the truth. That That's at least what this is. <clears throat> now, your virtual assistant should be taking notes. All right, so they should be writing down these answers and this information. 
Any repairs needed? That's an easy question. They should just write down the answers. All right. They're not going to speculate about how much it'll cost. They're not. The virtual assistant is just getting information. Uh, repair costs. How much is the home listed? That's the next. Is it listed? That's important for you to know. What's the price? Okay. How long has it been listed? Have you had any offers? How much were your offers that you didn't accept? Isn't this good shit? I mean, <laughs> wouldn't you rather call a lead knowing all of this than just kind of, uh, I don't want to say it's a cold call, but it's kind of more cold than... I say that in front of me when I call it. Say it again, Ed? I say I should have had that lead, that, that form in front of me when I called. Yeah. I, was try- I, was going, I was trying to go off the fly, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um is there any uh, the next section motivation and price is there any particular reason you're looking to sell at this time how many times and how many ways have we asked them about motivation here so far at least three at least three we as a virtual assistant in a non-confrontational non-salesy way is there a particular reason why you're selling you know is you guys uh have been living there for a while, right? Um, how? Uh, why are you wanting to sell? Is there a reason? You know, have the virtual assistant put it in their own words, but they must follow the script, okay? Like, I'm talking about don't reinvent me a whole script, Mr. Virtual Assistant, but you can you can have a little leeway with this, but, but don't reinvent it, okay? This is why you need to practice with your virtual assistant. Uh, the next question. How quickly are you looking to sell? This is a big question, too. If they said today, that's an indicator that there's some pretty serious motivation. If they said six months, okay, I've heard that. I see that come back on these all the time, six months. It's crazy. You guys are, what are you doing? You're gearing up to sell your house sometime in six months. Okay. People do goofy stuff. I've had people tell my virtual assistant, oh, I was just putting it on Zillow um, to see what people would say about what what maybe I could get maybe. I wasn't really serious. I didn't really want to sell. Okay, well, I'm glad my virtual assistant had that conversation and I didn't waste my time with that shit, right? What a joke. That guy's a clown. He wasted my time. So (laughs) I'll let the virtual assistant handle it for five bucks an hour or seven or whatever it is. Okay, what are you looking to sell the property for? Okay, is that price flexible? I like it. See, another indication of motivation. If they are flexible on price, this is a this is possibly another indication that they're motivated. How did you establish that number? I love that. I love it. Just ask them. Non-confrontational. Uh, Mr. Homeowner, this is the virtual assistant speaking. Mr. Mr. Homeowner, um, how quickly are you looking to sell? Oh, okay. Sometime this month, you'd love to see it. Okay. What are you looking to sell the property for? Oh, okay. That that's the price. Okay. Is that price flexible? It is a little. Okay. All right. That's good. How did you come up with that number in particular, sir? Okay. Uh, uh. You see, there's nothing really confrontational about this. If I can offer you cash and close quickly, what is the best you can do? That's a pretty good question. That's almost a closer. Uh, that's a slam dunk right there in some cases. You look at this, you look at this, it's obvious um, once it's been filled out. Can you do better than that? Is the next follow-up question. Here's the here's the here's another one. What are you going to do if the property doesn't sell? Doesn't it make you want to kick yourself in the butt because you're a closer and you're forgetting to ask some of these damn questions yourself, right? (laughs) I mean, I am. I'm a closer. I'm not just trying to prequal these people. I'm actually a closer, and I'm still forgetting to ask some of these. These are some hard-hitting questions that really reveal a lot to me but I'm forgetting myself. So it's nice 
that we have this. All right. Now, mortgage information. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're going to get kickback from the homeowner on any section of this, it is probably the mortgage information section. They don't understand why you need to know. They don't know themselves, or perhaps they're behind on payments. They're ashamed. Okay. Motivated sellers, though, that really want to walk away, they will share this information with you gladly with the virtual system. Okay. What do you currently owe on the property, Mr. Homeowner? Are there any other liens or mortgages? Okay. Um, you know, there's uh, other liens besides mortgages, guys, like water liens, like like tax liens, like uh, mechanics liens, like they didn't pay the plumber and he put a lien on their house. Okay. Uh, this is an okay question. This is an okay question. It's important for you to know what you're buying, isn't it? So, hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah. And so, when you're going through the pre qualifications and, and uh, uh, sellers start asking you questions about prices and how much you will offer, should, should, is it a good idea to be, uh, let them say, well, I'm not really. The, the, the guy that makes the prices, I'm just pre-qualifying you and letting them know you'll be somebody else calling them back so they can make them an offer. Yeah, yeah. I'll, t I'll, t I'll tell you how that how that goes here in a second, man. Um, this is going to be an easy conversation for her to pass off or him to pass off to you, the closer. And it's also going to buy you some time to do some thinking and some analysis on this thing before you call them, you know. Um, a lot of this information is already going to be right here written down in front of you. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of times we're calling these and I recommend we call these people blind sometimes and it's okay. You can call people blind and ask these questions yourself. But when you have a virtual assistant making these calls, it's important that they go through the scenario and then that they, um, you know, end up passing it off to you so you can close. And I'm going to show you how they do that here in just just one minute. Um, go through this mortgage information with the with the with the homeowner. Your virtual assistant should. Um, what's your payment? Taxes, taxes, insurance, interest rate, blah blah. More information here than you'll have to have to do the deal. Here's another thing, guys. I want to throw this in there. There's a lot of people talking about doing subject to. Subject to wholesaling, building a portfolio with subject to technique. I love subject to. It's great. But did you know that it's easier to find lease option deals than it is to find somebody that'll sign over the deed and let them let the mortgage stay in their own freaking name? Okay, so it boggles my mind when people scratch their head at me and say, this lease option business is too hard. I'm going to go join Pace Morby's group. Okay, I love Pace Morby. I'm not down in him at all. You should be in his group. But that's not an easier fucking thing than this, right? <laughs> okay, it, it's all based on a motivated seller. And in a subject to scenario, you're looking for a hardcore motivated seller. Um, not quite so much. And I, I might talk about this more tomorrow because there's a hierarchy of things and, and I think I want to break it down for everybody, but, uh, this is where my virtual assistant stops in the mortgage information. They, they fill this out as much as they can, the mortgage information, then they quit. And they save the most uncomfortable part of the conversation for last. Right. Um, uh, but here, here's where they stop at the end of that section. Now, the exit strategy right here, I'll, I'll at the top, I'll have them go ahead, the virtual assistant, and fill out all this information here with the contact information and everything too. So they, they'll have to go back or they'll have to do it before they make the call. But I want, I want to know who the hell they talk to and I want to know how to call them myself, right? But down here, you can see it says exit strategy and there is no need for your virtual assistant to fill out this bottom section exit strategy because your virtual assistant isn't going to know okay this is where you look at the information where you the or the closer 
looks at the information on the form and makes a determination yourself what the after repair value is by running some comps like Ed was talking about. Um, kind of figuring up what Zillow says or what, what other places say the as-is value is, right? Notes. Any any ideas that you're having about the property, repair costs, what you think it will cost to repair if it needs repairs, based on some of the information that they wrote up top here. Likely purchase, this is a yes or no, right? Offer, is this a cash offer or is this a lease option offer or am I planning on making a dual offer to this person, okay? You see how this kind of steps you back from the phone for a little bit and lets you do some thinking and get your game plan on? This is this is a real benefit to this too. <clears throat> I like what Ed was saying. If if you don't have a virtual assistant and you're you feel weak on the phone, like to yourself, I mean I've heard Ed, he's not that weak on the phone, but you know, Ed Ed beats himself up on the phone. I mean <laughs> so if he feels like that, and this is an easier way to slide right into a closing call, um, by all means, man, it's it's a great idea. I, I love it. Um, but you you do you do not give yourself enough credit though, Ed. You you are pretty good. So um, now no, fill that. You'll want to fill. I'm sorry. Say it again, Ed. I say, well, I'm trying. I'm, I want to get. I want to be just as comfortable as you are. Yeah. Yeah, you're coming along real well. But that's why I that's why I don't want to vir- I don't actually want to uh get a virtual assistant to do all this. I want to I want to master it myself before I get somebody else doing it. Yes. Yep. I I can feel you on that. Um now you were talking about how they pass this off. Here's the bottom, the exit strategy. They're not going to fill out the exit strategy part. That's yours. So when they get done with the mortgage information section, you're going to have to, I, I probably should write this down at the bottom. I don't know why I haven't, but the virtual assistant needs to be trained to say, okay, Mr. Homeowner, that's all the information that I feel like I needed to collect from you today. I'm going to show this to my boss or my partner or whoever you are. And we'll discuss this this afternoon. Are you going to be available this afternoon for a phone call? If my partner and I would like to call and make an offer. Okay, that's it. That's it. Then you, they can schedule an appointment if you want them to schedule an appointment. They can whatever. It's up to you. How do you want them handling your leads? Okay, but that's an easy pass off. Easy pass off. They didn't make any offers. They didn't allude to any offers. They didn't any of that. Okay, so you're just determining motivation here. Right. So that's basically in a nutshell what this is about now i guess it's worth sharing that if you get that sheet back from your virtual assistant and that person said all cash offer house is worth a hundred thousand i'm asking a hundred thousand and i am a motivated seller here's my reasons blah blah but this but i gotta have cash i gotta have a hundred thousand blah 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 are you going to throw that lead away? Let's imagine you got a you got a virtual assistant that filled out that form right there. It looks like a pretty motivated guy, but he wants all cash and it's he's asking close to what it's worth. Are you just going to throw that away or are you going to call them and try to close them on what? And what would you close them on? Anybody? Feedback. <laughs> Anybody got any feedback? I I I'm I'm suggesting don't throw it away. I'm suggesting that you get a lead like that come back from your virtual assistant where the guy wants an all cash offer. He is asking close to at, you know full value, but he seems motivated. It's worth a phone call. Because remember, nobody's even begun to explain to this guy what a lease with an option to purchase is. All right? If you want your virtual assistant to close these people, that's not what this is. 
you need to be able to take these leads, look through the, the lead information sheet right here, and notice if there's a motivation. The motivated ones you call. It doesn't matter what the price was, what they're asking. It doesn't matter. If they look motivated, you call. If they don't look motivated and the numbers are all jacked up, you know, they're asking close to what it's worth, then don't call. That's what I do. I don't want to waste my time calling people with no motivation and the numbers suck. Right? So I will call a lead that the numbers suck, but there's motivation there because motivation is an indication to me that the numbers might change if I just talk to them. Right. Am I right or am I wrong guys? Give me some feedback. Oh yeah. You, you're dead right, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there could be an opportunity here because they may just be on a track in terms of, you know, what they think they're going to get. And, you know, they might be getting a bunch of phone calls. So they think there's a, a, huge amount of interest in their property and they're now in the driver's seat only to find out that we're all basically trying to find out where we can, you know, get in and fit in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, like I was saying yesterday, 95% of the general population or more does not have any idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And if you think that just popping a VA on the phone is going to fix that. It's not. Um, <clears throat> they, they need to hear it from a closer. They need to hear it from the business owner. Oh, wouldn't it be nice, though, to call? Hi, earlier today, you talked to Joy, my assistant. I'm the business owner, and I saw this, this information that you shared with him, and I had to call you immediately. I think you have a problem, Mr. Homeowner. Okay, that's a Claude version. Yeah, that, that, puts you in, that puts you in authority too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, way different scenario than, um, hey, you just you just texted back and you said you'd be interested in leasing until I can buy. Oh, no, you weren't? Oh, okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Click. You know, um, why the fuck? I, I don't get it. Why they say yes on the text and then you call them and they say no? What do you think that's an indication of? If they said yes on the text that they would consider a lease and then an, uh, and then a purchase, but then when you call them, they just shut your show down. What's that an indication of? Anybody? <laughs> that they ain't motivated. Uh, anybody else? Um, I just think they're, they they might be in denial. They are, they're not sure. They know they're in a situation, but they don't have enough options or know of enough options. And this is where you have to kind of, you know, um, put their, their foot to the fire. Yeah, it may be an indication if they said yes on the text message, but then you call them and they say no, it may be an indication that your phone skills need some improvement too, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I mean, they said yes, and then they said no. Um, why? I, I've even asked homeowners that. I've said, Mr. Homer, I, <laughs> I'm confused here. I'm sorry. I've got a problem. I, I'm hoping you can help me fix it because I, I sent you a message asking you if you'd be interested in this, but and you said yes that's why i called you and then now you're telling me no i mean have i offended you in some way <laughs> uh <laughs> so this this um this pre-screen sheet is a great way to slide into these conversations and to eliminate some of the bs that you got to go through listen to these people tell you no 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 um but with that being said, let me reiterate, this is not the closing call, okay? Don't expect your virtual assistant to close these guys and gals because they're just not equipped to do it. But they can be get you a sweet little Filipino girl that talks good English, that knows how to turn on that sweet charm, and nobody wants to hang up on a sweet-sounding female. Am I right? <laughs> right? Right? I don't know how many guys out there could, could verify and testify 
that you bought some shit in your life that you didn't even need because some female was presenting it well. No, <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a little sales team I put together and it was three girls, three females. And um, they called me Charlie and they were my angels. And uh, <laughs> Victor said, I'll stop. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm glad they called me Charlie instead of Bosley or whatever that guy is. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you, besides the confidence, I don't know why females struggle with this sometimes, but they struggle with the confidence thing. It's like this. They feel like this is a man's job or they've been told this is a man's world or sales is a man's game or what i don't know they but once they get over the confidence portion of this in the mind game of it they are ruthless and deadly okay <laughs> i'm telling you what i love it so find you a find you a sweet little sounding virtual assistant somebody that that can talk and I don't mean talk like this, because that's real annoying, too. Okay, I don't mean sweet like this. You know what sweet means. You you got what I'm saying. But that shit works, guys. <laughs> so I, I hear what you're saying about the virtual assistant, and, and I'm like Ed. I'm not really budgeted to do the whole virtual assistant thing at this stage. You know, I'm, I'm basically trying to get to a certain... Um, threshold before I start, you know, outsourcing a bunch of this stuff. And I'm looking at, you know, consistently doing, you know, three to five deals um, a month. In my market, it might be two deals because, you know, we can do we can do some pretty good numbers in California. Uh, but definitely that. But this form, uh, this form is strong because if I get to the bottom of this form and I start asking some information, I could always go back and say, well, do you need me to change the answer you gave me up here? Because you mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you that you needed to move right away, but now you're saying uh so I'm not understanding. Um can you shed some light on that for me, Mr. Seller? Exactly. Yeah. And um uh, you could really cater this if you understand the, the closers training, which which comes from Claude's uh it's the guts sales training for real estate, which is I I, I'm a I'm a trainee. I'm a student. I'm a teacher. I'm all that. I wanna I wanna do it because it works. Yeah. Um, I could I could cater this particular this particular VA prequal script into a guts presentation pretty easily, pretty easily. So all I would have to do is maybe modify the the agenda, the opening sentence or two, just a little, and then I would have to throw in the closing section at the bottom. That's it, guys. Um, they're doing much of the conversation for you. And in fact, if you're just following my trainers, uh, if you're following my closers training and the, the seller call cheat sheet, and then you read this, it, it sometimes makes your mouth water because you're like, oh, well, I'd almost rather use this script than, okay, that's great but it doesn't have the closing section okay it's missing that so you'll still need to add that in there guys uh mr thinker wants to know about short sales no not an assignment mr thinker um they take it from start to finish and send you a check uh rick says hey what's up what's up rick craig says thanks for going over this anybody else got any questions we've been here an hour Anybody else? I can't believe I talked for a whole freaking hour. <laughs> What's up with that? Come on, man. Spit, spit knowledge. Spit knowledge. Uh, I appreciate it, man. You guys are so encouraging, and I, I really do appreciate you. Um, thanks for being here, guys. We do have a VIP private session. It won't go public at all in any way whatsoever. That's tonight at 5 o'clock Pacific time and 7 o'clock Central Time, 8 o'clock if you're in Eastern Standard Time. All right, guys. Uh, don't miss it. That'll be tonight. Private VIP. Check us out also at Real Estate Wholesalers Club if you watch this video elsewhere. Okay. Anybody else? Any last 
Any last things before we sign off? I've got a one-on-one with Michael Goolsby right now. <laughs> I'm going to sign out and sign back in, okay, Michael? And then you and me will chat. All right. All right, man. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. All right, Justin, thanks.